uh, success is an elusive thing, right? Um, what is it? And I think it's very interesting that if most people can't define success, well, it means you made X amount of dollars, or, but if you make X amount of dollars but you spend more, are you successful? Or, well, it means you come home happy every day. Okay, how do you know when you're happy, you know? Uh, so I think success is a funny thing, which is we all seem to pursue it, but we don't know how to measure it or actually how to define it. <laughs> so how do you pursue something that you can't measure? Fascinating. Um, so when people say to me, how do you measure success? The question we all have to ask ourselves, am I successful? I don't know. I mean, I had a good year last year. Uh, and what does that mean? Does that mean I made a lot of money? Does that mean I was really happy? Oh, I'll let you decide, right? right. Um, maybe neither, maybe both. Um, I had a good year last year, but am I successful? And the answer is no. I don't feel I am because I'm trying to build a world that doesn't exist yet. I'm trying to build a world in which 90% of people go home at the end of the day feeling fulfilled by the work that they do. So I definitely took a step, a big step forward towards that goal, but I'm still so far away. So somebody said to me, then how do you know if you're successful? And the answer is, if it can go by itself. And so what is more interesting to me as a measurement of success is not the, 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 the markers per se, it's not the, the financial goal or the, the, the size of the house that you want to buy. Those are nice things, go for it. Those are, but those are not measurements of success. Those are just nice things to collect along the way. Right. Um, for me, it's momentum. I want to measure momentum, which is, you know, when, when something is moving and you start to see it lose momentum, you're like, uh-oh, give it a push, because if you don't give it a push, it's gonna stop. And an object in stasis is much harder to get going. It requires a lot more energy to get something started than it does to keep it going, right? And so if you don't let it stop and you can keep it going, it's this, you know, it still might slow down down there, but you can get it going again much easier. And for me, the opportunity is to get the ball rolling faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's like a snowball. And my responsibility is, because it's not rolling downhill yet, it's not on automatic yet, I need to still keep it going to find that critical mass where it can go and at the point it can go by itself without me, then I will find something else to do. And that may not happen in my lifetime. I, I think we must all stop measuring promotions, salaries, and these things, but rather measure the momentum of your career. Does my career have momentum? Can I see it moving in the right direction? Can I see it gathering moss? You know, uh, Can I see that it's e becoming easier for me? to keep the momentum, it's becoming easier for me to grow the size of this thing, it's, it's requiring less effort. That's the thing we need to measure. Yeah. That's the thing that we need to be cognizant of, which is the momentum of our careers, not just the, the markers that we think define our success. You speak to businesses and companies and leadership teams and employees and stuff. Uh, without mentioning names, I don't want to put you on the spot, but have you gone and talked to a company that's been in trouble and then spoken to their team? and then checked in on them after you've spoken to their leadership team. And what did that look like? Did you notice a noticeable change? Did they come to you and tell you that this has helped our organization out and our culture is much improved because of it? I am not, I'm not anybody's like, you know, mom or dad, I, I'm not gonna do it for you. And I have a very less fair approach of it. I once had a, I once had a client, this was a bunch of years ago, that said, what guarantee do I have that your stuff will work? To which my answer was, none. Like, I, I'm giving you a tool. You can, it's like a hammer. You can use it broadly or narrowly. You can build a table, you can build a house. It's the same tool. You can use it for marketing, you can use it to completely revitalize your entire culture. And even though I'm gonna sell you the most beautiful hammer, I'm not gonna guarantee the structural integrity of the house, right? It's your business. You want to ignore all my stuff? Ignore it. I don't care. It's your and if your business collapses, you know what happens to me? Nothing. Like I don't mean to be cold about it. Like of course I want the people I work with to do well, but it's not mine. It's theirs. And I take no emotional responsibility for the decisions they make. So yes, there are many people that I've had the pleasure of working with, some who work for dysfunctional organizations that went on the hard journey of completely changing the way they lead and completely revitalizing their culture and it has great success. It's not because of me, it's because of them, right? At the same time, there are many people who came in like, what an amazing speech and did nothing, you know? Thanks, that was great, you know? And I don't, it's, of course it's gonna fail, you know? So I, I think that we, we have too much, especially in the consulting world or the design world, everybody's so paternalistic about it. And I, I, designers are famous for this, right? They get so personally offended when the client chooses the wrong thing. 
Oh, there's six idiots. Don't they know we're trying to help them? Or who cares? Like, it's their freaking business, right? That's what you find. I've, I've had that. Instead of arguing with somebody for them to make the right choice, which, because we genuinely want to help them. What I have found is if you push the accountability onto them, because when we argue, we're taking accountability. This is better. This will help you. We're taking responsibility, accountability. But if we say, look, we've been doing this a bunch of years. We know more about design than you do. Um, I'm telling you, for every reason that I can outline for you, why this will help you more. But if you don't want to do it, that's fine. It's your business. Do what you want. The minute you switch the accountability and put it all on them, amazingly, they're much more open to your opinion. So people are always talking about visions and missions and all of this stuff. Um, and um, when people ask me, like, what example should I look to? Like, what company should I? I'm like, here's an organization yeah. with a vision, a cause. It was founded with a, a cause. Um, it's an entrepreneurial venture. Mm -hmm. it's, it, America is an experiment. It's an entrepreneurial venture where a, a bunch of people got together and decided we needed to start our own country um, um, because there were certain obstacles that were getting in the way of a vision that we had of a better kind of country, a better kind of company, right? Um, and they stated it right out of the beginning, all men are created equal, mm -hmm. endowed with these unalienable rights amongst, amongst which include life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it's not, a, uh, it's not just um, a competitive statement, like to be the best, to be the most respected. That's not what it was. And I'm amazed how many companies start their visions or missions right. with those, that terribly egocentric language. Right. It was an ideal. And the amazing thing is, is we've been good at it and bad at it in our history, mm -hmm. but it's endured for 240 plus years because we fundamentally believe that we are at our best when we're pursuing that. But it is an ideal. We will never actually achieve all people are equal, but we will die trying. And that's the point. Mm -hmm. And it's the same for a company, which is true vision inside a company, is something that has nothing to do with your product. It is an ideal to which you will attempt to build and advance that ideal through your company with your product. You'll never achieve the ideal, but you'll die trying. And this is what gives our work meaning. Mm. This is what it gives our lives purpose, mm. right? The difference between vision and a goal is the finish line. A goal is 26.2 miles. You can simply count the metrics and know when you've completed your goal. As a vision is having a crystal clear sense of what the finish line looks like, but no idea of how far away it is. Wow. And it's, and the reality is you'll spend your entire life never actually crossing the finish line, but the joy that every marathon you complete, you feel like you're getting closer. Every milestone that you accomplish makes you feel like you're getting closer and closer to the ideal, and this is what gives our life and our work meaning. How are you learning to better manage and motivate teams? I'm learning to manage teams by allowing the teams to do more themselves. Um, there's a... Um, brilliant leader by the name of David Marquet, who wrote a book called Turn the Ship Around. And he had an experience as a submarine captain on the USS Santa Fe, where he realized that as much as he knew about submarining, you know, he'd been a submariner his whole career, um, that put on this new submarine, he learned the hard way that he actually didn't know how the submarine worked. He, 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 uh, he made an order that nobody knew how to do it because there was, that didn't exist on that side. And so he realized he had no choice but to trust his people. And he went through this transformation as a leader of telling everybody what to do to allowing people to tell him what should be done. Um, and I've, I've learned a lot from him and I highly recommend his book. Um, and uh, and I, I've, I've really learned that, which is, you know, at the top of the organization, uh, as David says, the people have all the authority, the leaders have all the authority, but at the bottom they have all the context, right? And so you can't just push all the context up, you have to push the authority down. Um, and so the responsibility of leadership is to train people, make sure that they have the skill set, help build their confidence that, that they have the confidence to do what needs to be done. Yeah. They have to have competence and confidence. Right. And that's, that's your job. That's the only job of the leader. Make, it's like, like a parent. Mm -hmm. Make sure they have competence and confidence. You know, make sure your kids get schooling and make sure that they believe in themselves. And then leave them, you know? And so I've, I've done the same thing. Instead of sort of showing people how I would do it, I, I want them to learn how it's done you know, and feel good about themselves, and then just however they do it is how they do it. Yeah. You know, um, and the result is remarkable. Um, people feel better about coming to work. They feel like they have something to contribute. They feel more valuable, as opposed to just being told this is how I would do it or I'm going to do it this way. 
um, or do it my way. Um, so yeah, um, completely changing my understanding of my job as um, more like a parent than a manager. <laughs>